Hey, hello everyone. My name is Mr. Shading. I'm a teacher at Heaven Park Elementary and I am totally excited to be here today with you. It's going to be great. Um, we're going to be talking about some math. Uh, I know that things are different, obviously, and we're doing it in a, kind of a different format, but it excites me to have this opportunity, and I hope that you're feeling that same way. I, I definitely know I miss my students. I'm seeing them when I can through Teams meetings and things that we're doing online, I'm communicating them best I can with email, and I know that your teachers are feeling that same way. So don't be afraid to reach out and say hello to them. Um, I hope that you're having that communication, but in that moment, again, comes this new opportunity of us being able to spend some time together with some math, and I'm really excited about that. We're going to be having a bit of a math talk, a warm-up. We're going to look at some fractions today, and then there'll be some games that we'll be playing. So that's kind of where we're going to start. And as I said, to begin with, I would like us to look at a bit of a math talk, right? To kind of get our brains going and think about numbers. And I want to talk today about this idea that we can find around multiples and patterns that we find when multiplying nines. I know there's people that have like really cool tricks with their fingers on how they can find answers to multiplying nines. I know we can skip count and model and do all these other things, but numbers fascinate me and they fascinate me because there are always these patterns we can find and I always look at it like a puzzle. I'm a big fan of puzzles. So it's like if we can explore what we find in these patterns, these puzzles of numbers, it really opens things up. So I'm going to start by listing out are multiples of 9 for you. And again, if you're not sure what I mean by a multiple, I'm really just doing the math itself, right? Like 9 times 1, 9 times 2. But I'm just going to list out these multiples right now for you. And as I do that, I really want you to start and ask yourself, are you seeing any form of a pattern so far? We have 9, 18, 27, 45, 54, 63, Three. Again, I'm going to pause there. I want you looking. Are you seeing anything? Is there something fascinating that's happening in a pattern? Are you noticing anything in the ones place? Are you noticing anything in the tens place? Right? So 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 72. If you're starting to see this pattern, this is what's so great about multiplication and patterns and what we see definitely with our nines is that we don't always feel like we have to have them all perfectly in quick recall. It helps. We want to get there at some point, but in that process as we learn it, we know we already have the strategy. I always tell my students all the time, like after we look at the strategy, I say, you know, write this down on your paper when you start any of your work. And then you can refer back to it, right? So here's these like first 10 multiples, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, 90. Have you noticed anything yet? Right? I'm going to start a second column. I'm going to change the color, but it doesn't mean we're really changing the math because if we think about the next one, it's going to be 99. And then it's going to be 108. So if we stop and kind of think about it and we go back, right? And if you found it, great. I bet you are already able to think about what are these next pieces? Like what's going to go here in this pattern and that's what's the fun of it like I like this idea as you start to build it you could actually start thinking out like rows and columns away like what would this be if we think about what we've seen and noticed in the pattern and if you haven't quite found any patterns or you found one but not two that's okay don't stress it like this is the fun and the adventure of it as we look for it but let's kind of talk about maybe what we saw happening in our ones and our tens place right when we started off in our ones place we definitely saw that we had a 9. And then it kind of comes down, right? Look, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a 0. So there's that pattern. Like, can you see how that pattern's happening? We're coming down by 1 each time. And then if we look in the tens place, there is a very similar pattern happening there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But this time we're going up. Right? So we're increasing by 1 in the tens place, but we're decreasing by 1, decreasing, just make sure you heard me, decreasing by 1 in the ones place. And you can see that pattern really does follow itself, because once I get to 99, if we think about that, if I said plus 1, right, that would get me to 10. 
And if I said, uh, let's see here with the zero minus one, that would take me back down to nine. And so it's really cool as we kind of think about what we see and how these things occur. So if I follow that pattern, nine, 10, 11, nine, eight, seven, we can see this pattern continuing to work. And if you need to, check on the calculator. Like, let's see if that's correct. Because this would be 11, 12, 13. That would be 9 times 13 is 117. Like, if that pattern's right, that math will check out. So let's see. 9, 10, 11, 12, 9, 8, 7, 6, right? But what's really cool about this is if we stop, and look at things another direction. That's where like patterns are so fun. If we start to look other directions, we might start to notice something else if we kind of look left to right with these numbers. Look left to right and then kind of tell me, what do you notice? Like if I'm looking left to right here, what do I notice, right? If I look left to right here, what do I notice? Maybe we'll put in a couple more and see if maybe what we're noticing here is working. Like what do we notice moving left to right? And I think if you're with me, one thing that you started to see is look at our ones place as we move from one column to the next. I have a nine here, I have a nine here. I have an eight, I have an eight. Which means I can almost predict I shouldn't even say almost, I can predict before I even get down to this, right? Before we even get down to this piece down and do each column in here, I can predict already what's gonna happen there. We can think about what the digit ends with, right? Like that number ends with a certain digit. It's gonna end with a zero. This number here, it's gonna end with a three. And if we test that theory with our other directions, it's really exciting. Six, five, four, three, right? That pattern that goes this way, but also the second supporting pattern that goes here and then there. So this is what's so fascinating and fun about nines. And what I really want to encourage you to do is like try this on a piece of paper, like write them out and start to see how far can you go using the pattern, right? You're not even really thinking about, do I have to put it in a calculator? Do I have to solve it using an algorithm on paper? But it's more about, can I use this pattern to find like, what would all these numbers be? And I think that that is so fun to get going and get our brains thinking about numbers that way. And I would even encourage this. This is one thing that I really enjoy doing. This works really well with nines. There's like a really cool pattern happening with our nines here. But then I wonder, is there another number that we could use that has this? Like if I was using multiples of six, would I find similar patterns? If I was using multiples of five, could I find similar patterns or multiples of eight? And that's really what I would like you to try. Like give that a go when you're sitting around, grab some paper and a pencil and go for it and, and explore that journey of how fun numbers can be when we look for patterns. So I hope that got you activated and you're ready to go because up next we're going to be diving into some fractions and I want you to know that these are things that are going to be very helpful if you're using some of those packets that you have right some of the paper that you've been getting from your schools we're going to really explore a lot of those concepts so to stay tuned for that because that is coming up right now okay I was kidding I came back because now we get to talk about all this awesome stuff that's going to go on with our fractions. Today we're going to be talking about sums of fractions. Not sum fractions. Well, we will talk about some fractions, but not. We're going to talk about the sum, S U M, of fractions. And for those of you remembering what all of that means, sum is what we call the answer to an addition problem, right? So as we're working with sums today, we're going to be thinking about this idea of how we can add our fractions together. That's our big goal. How do we take fractions and add them together? So we're going to do that through a three-step process, which you can see. First, we're going to model each fraction. Then we're going to add all of the parts to a new model. And I'll show you what that means, right? Sometimes the steps aren't always super clear until you see it. And then we'll just rewrite our answer as a fraction. Cool. Let's dive in. Here's our first example, right? We're going to take one-fourth. We're going to add that to 
one fourth. Okay, so there's our math. What are we gonna do? We gotta add these fractions together. Well, let me look at our steps over here. First, it says to model each fraction. So I'm gonna do that right underneath here. I'm just gonna model what I think one fourth would look like. And as I draw my hole, right, here's my hole. I'm gonna actually draw another hole here for this second fraction. And I want them to look fairly close, right? I'm gonna try my very best to make them large enough. And here, as I look at my denominator, right, it tells me I know I'm taking my whole and I'm going to partition it into four equal parts. That's what it means to have a fourth. And again, I'm going to try to be equal, right? I know my boxes aren't perfect. I'm trying my best. And then as I look at my numerator, it tells me that I have one of these four parts that I could shade in, right? That's what one fourth means. So I'm going to shade that in. Okay. Now let's go over to our second model and let's finish that one out. So again, it's partitioned into four equal parts. And again, according to my numerator, I have one of them. So here it is. I've taken my two models and, or my fractions, excuse me, and I've modeled them, right? So if we look at this next part, it says to like add the parts into a new model, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to redraw a model and I'm going to look at what I had like total between these first two. I have one two. So now I actually have two fourths. So as my new model, that's what I'll shade in. I'll shade in two of my boxes because I'm just I'm putting them together, right? That idea of using these sums, this addition, I'm going to put them together. So that takes us to our really last step right here, rewrite as a fraction. Well, if I look at what I've done as my final piece, I see that when I take one fourth and I add another fourth, one fourth plus one fourth, I get two fourths. So that's how we can walk through this process. We want to model, then we can add those modeling pieces together, and then we just rewrite it as an answer. So <clears throat> of course, let's explore a couple others. Let's try one more, right? So I'm going to go with two thirds, and I'm going to add, let's do two thirds. Let's do two thirds plus two thirds. Now, at this point, as you can see, with every question, it's not like it'll always be the exact same fraction. We'll, we'll play around with that, but let's just follow our steps, right? If you remember, the very first step is I'm gonna model each fraction. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one hole, right? And I'm gonna partition it into, or cut it up into, or divide it, whatever term you wanna use, partition, divide, cut. I'm gonna partition it into three equal parts. So again, I'm gonna do my very best. So there's three, and the numerator tells me how many I can shade in. It's how many I have, so I have two, so I'm gonna shade in two thirds. All right, so there's two thirds. Wow, okay, I'm getting there on my coloring roll. We'll, we'll make it work. Okay, and now let's model our second fraction, right? Which is also two thirds. Again, it won't always be that way. Hopefully uh, after this, I'll show you an example where it's not always the exact same two fractions. And again, the denominator is thirds, right? Okay, and then let's go ahead and shade in two. So there's my first step. I just modeled both of my fractions. Now we wanna go ahead and kind of put these together in a new model, right? I'm gonna count up, and I know I'm still in thirds, so I'm gonna cut this in thirds, but I wanna count up what I've been able to shade so far, like how many pieces, right? So there's one, two, three, four pieces. Great. I got four pieces. I'm going to shade into my model. All right. Great. Let's do that. One, two, three, thir, thir, three. Well, okay. There's three, but I need four. Wait. So I have four. I need to shade, but there's three. What am I going to do? I'll just build another model, right? Okay. So I got that. But since I need to shade in one more, I might as well just build a second model. <laughs> Glad I thought of that. I'll make that three. So let's see. And that's in thirds. So I had one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, so now there's this last step then of how am I going to write this as a fraction? When I take two thirds and I add it to two thirds, what do I get? Well, I know that each hole was cut into thirds, right? That, that's what I did each time. Look at that. Each model I did, I cut into three parts. 
and I know that I shaded in four. So my answer could be four thirds. That's one way of me of answering this. But there is another way, right? This idea of equivalent. We always like that idea of like what's equivalent. Ways that we can show numbers that have the same value, but maybe they look different. And so let's rethink what this model might look like. If I go back and think in this first model, it is thirds, right? Just like all the others, but I shaded in all of it. So if I shaded in all of it, that means I actually have one whole, right? This is actually one whole. It's one. It's the number one. It's the whole thing. And then what's left over here is one out of three. So I actually have two ways that I can symbolize my answer here. And that would be that if I had two thirds plus two thirds, according to the first time I did my model, that was four thirds, which is absolutely correct. And the other way, or I could write four thirds is as one whole and one third. That's pretty interesting. That's fun. But, you know, with anything, the more we practice it, the better it gets. And, like, one of the things I said with this is that, like, maybe it's not always the exact same two fractions. I don't know how that happened so far. So maybe we should play around with that as a way of doing that. Let's see here. Why don't we, let's get a little bit larger. We're going to take six eighths and we're going to add, let's add three eighths. Okay, so now I'm modeling. My modeling is going to get a little bit trickier because I got to partition these things into eights. But there's always these really cool tricks, like of I always kind of talk about them as like compatible denominators, like they're friendly with one another. So if I know how to do fourths, which we just saw, it's going to help me partition into eights. And I want to show you how that works, right? So step one of this, we're going to model. So again, I'm going to draw a model. I'm going to make it big. And again, the size of your model does not change the value of your fraction. Just because you write something larger on paper doesn't make it larger in value. Just keep that in mind. But here we go. We have 6 eighths and 3 eighths. So I'm going to model these. So I have to partition this one into eighths. And like I said, if I know how to partition into fourths, I can actually partition into eighths. I want to show you how to do that. So here's my fourths, right? Now, if I take that in each section, I take half of that half, right? I have to cut everything in half like that. Then I should have eight pieces. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pretty cool, huh? I'll show you how that works again on this. I'll, I'll move through a little bit slower, but let's go ahead and shade in our numerator. That's how many we have. So let's shade in six. So again, we're modeling what we have. Three, four, five, six, okay. And now let's go back and we'll work on partitioning this into eight pieces again. So again, like I said, if you understand how to partition into force, and then you just take half of everything. Like I'm going to cut this one in half and this one in half. See how I did that right there? I'm going to cut this one in half and this one in half. Then I have eight pieces. I hope you can see how that works. All right, it's a cool little trick. And so according to my numerator, we need to shade in three. One, two, three. All right, so these are my two models. That was step one, model your fractions. But now we're going to put them together, right? We're going to put them back together in their own model. So I'm going to recreate a new model because I'm going to take all these pieces I shaded and squeeze them together, right? Addition, we're going to add them together. We're going to find the sum. So I'm going to partition this one into eighths. So again, I'm going to take force and then I'm going to go half of my pieces. Then there's eight. And now let's count and see how many pieces we shaded. We've got one, two, three, doesn't show up very good. I'm going I'm to try another color here. Four, maybe you can see that better. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've shaded nine pieces, which means we're going to take those nine pieces and we're going to shade them in over here with our new model, right? We're going to put them all together on one model. So I got to shade in nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I know I need to shade in nine, but I'm already at eight and I'm all full. 
So remember, when that happens and we need to shade in more, we're just going to create another model. And we do want to make sure that, again, that model is still cut into eight pieces or partitioned into eight pieces like all the other models. So I go force, and then I take, cut those in half, and I'll have my eight pieces. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now let's shade in our ninth. And here is my final model. Now the last step of all of that is going to be putting these together as a fraction. Like, How do I write this model as a fraction? So again, I have two choices. Remember, first, I know all my pieces were partitioned, oh, excuse me, partitioned into eights. So I know I have eight and I shaded in nine. So one way of me showing this answer is nine eights or nine out of eight. The other way is I can look at my models and think about, well, what does this mean? I've shaded in all of this one. And if I've shaded in all of something, that's going to get me one whole. And then I have what's left over is one out of eight. So I can write this answer as nine eights or one and one eighth. Right? So those are the two options I have for putting that together. So I hope this is like making some sense. I think really following those steps can be helpful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place up next for you some questions that I would like you to try. Like try a couple of these and see what you can do, right? And again, with those uh, worksheets that you have, like look for problems like this in there and then create it, the models and work with them to help you solve this. So let's try this. What if we took 3, 6 plus 1, 6? So give that one a go, like see what you can do. Try it on extra on some scratch paper and see how it works. Or maybe we want to do, oh, how about this? I know I said not always the same, but what if we took one half and we added one half? That would be interesting. Or as I always like, a big old challenge. What if we had three fractions? Well, I'll tell you what, the steps would not change. They would not change. Now, one thing I want you to notice today is that we've definitely looked at all these fractions having the same denominator, right? And this works really well when all of them have the same denominator. We will be looking at later, like, what do we do when our denominators are not the same? Don't worry, we'll talk about that. But for now, practice this out. And remember those steps, right? First, you want to model your fractions. After that, you want to kind of put all of your models together. I'm going to say put models together, kind of shorthand, right? We're going to like take everything we shaded and combine it in because, again, we're using addition. And then just write your model as a fraction, right? As a fraction. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes there's going to be two different ways that you can write that answer. And we talked about that a little bit. So I hope this really helps. Um, I think these are great steps to always work with. And as you continue to work on your fractions, you know, it's all about exploring it and giving it your best. So if things feel confusing, don't worry. That's where you have the opportunity to reach out and ask questions. And we'll continue to work on this. Thank you so much. And uh, now that you kind of have that, let's spend a couple of minutes playing a game. And it's some games you're probably familiar with. We'll see. But I'm ready for the challenge. Okay, it's game time. So here's what we're gonna need. You probably know these games, but I thought it'd be cool to refresh on a few and maybe practice some different variations. We're gonna play some Top It today. What you're gonna need is a deck of cards. We'll talk about what that looks like and how we put those together. And you're gonna need an opponent. You're gonna need someone to play with. Today, I'm playing against my good friend, Foo Dog here. So the two of us are gonna have this battle out glad they have been willing to say yes and play with me. So let's kind of go get started with Top It. The first thing you want to do with your cards, and I'll show you in a second around that, is go ahead and remove the face cards. And if you're not sure what I mean by face cards, those are things like the Jack and the Queen and the King. You are not going to need those for this game. So you can remove those. Also, if you have a deck of cards that has jokers in it, you can remove those as well. So what's gonna be in your deck is 
ace, and I'll explain more about that ace, and then two through 10. Those are the numbers that you're gonna use. So go ahead and get your materials ready, find your opponent, and let's get ready to have a good time. All right, so we got everything going, right? We got our deck of cards, we removed the faces. Oh, haha, -ha, got one. Now we've removed the face cards. We have everything through here from ace to 10. Now remember, each one of these cards is their face value. A 10 is worth a 10, a six is worth a six. And then the one when talking about the ace, that is one, right? So ace is gonna equal one. All right, I have Foo Dog here. Good luck, high five. Thanks for playing with me, whatever. And here we go. This is how it's gonna work. You're gonna take your deck of cards. You can shuffle it up if you desire. And then you're gonna split the deck of cards evenly with one another. Now, you could distribute those back and forth. I'll tell you one little trick I like to do is I kind of put my decks of cards next to each other. I kind of push till it's nice and even. And then I always let my opponent pick which one they want, just in case they don't feel like that was fair enough. So uh, which one would you like? Okay, it's all yours. So Food Dog gets their deck of cards. I get my deck of cards. Now, it's very helpful that you hold your deck kind of like this in your hand. That's one way of playing. I think it's a lot easier to show instead of having it down on the table. But it's up to you. There's always options. And how this game is going to work is today we're going to show you different ways. We're going to start with multiplication. So we're going to play this game using multiplication. And here's how it works. You're going to count down three, two, one, then flip. And you and your opponent are going to flip over your top card at the same time and place some face up on the table. So three, two, one, flip. Now, you and your opponent will look at your cards and whoever says the product or the answer to eight times eight first gets those cards themselves. So in this case, since I've been talking, Food Dog already told me that eight times eight was 64. They get the cards. And you can set those aside for now because the object of the game is try to take all the cards from your opponent. So we're gonna do it again. Three, two, one, flip. 14, yep, I said it first. So I get those cards and I'm gonna set those aside and we will continue to go. Okay, once you've been able to go through all of your cards, go ahead and take what you have captured, put them back in your deck. Again, you can shuffle them up if you will in your own, and then you're gonna continue the process. And as you can see after that first round, well, I've kind of taken some more cards there and we're gonna keep going. So we'll keep up this until one person is left without cards. So that is Top It using multiplication. But the cool thing about Top It is you can play this game using any operation. So instead of multiplication, maybe this round, Foo Dog and myself are gonna play using addition. Your choice, what pile would you like? Uh, you wanna take that pile this time? Okay, it's all yours. And this time we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're gonna practice using addition. So here we go. And three, two, one, flip. One plus four. That's mine. Three, two, one, flip. Uh, three, three. That's mine. That's mine. Well, I'm feeling pretty good in this game. Three, two, one, flip. Uh, six plus ten. Uh, Sixteen. 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 That's mine. Right. And we'll continue to play. You can also play this game using subtraction. So let's just pretend we're in the middle of a subtraction game. Three, two, one, flip. Eight minus two, eight minus two. six, six, six. So I got that, oh, there we go, I got it. Uh, three, two, one, flip. Uh, 10 minus six, four, four. Oh boy, I'm doing pretty good here, I'll tell you that. So those are the different ways in which you can play Top It. And I really wanna recommend that you play it. I hope you enjoyed. Use any of those uh, different operations and have a good time. 
Well, I hope that that went really well for you. I had a great time. I loved our little math talk around nines. That was amazing. I hope you have time to explore some other ones to see, like, can we find those patterns in other numbers? I enjoyed what we talked about today with finding ways that we can use sums of fractions, like how to follow the steps of modeling it, then kind of putting all of your models together into one piece, and then thinking about how do you write that new model you made as a fraction? Uh, so continue to practice that. Remember, there's a couple questions you could try and also use that packet work. There's some awesome questions in there around the sums of fractions. And then finally, we played some Top It, a game that I just love playing with another person. It's a good opportunity to break things up, take a little break, five, 10 minutes of a game. And again, you can play it with multiplication, subtraction, or addition. And the other thing that I love about games is like once you understand how to play it one way, build some house rules. Maybe you and the partner that you're playing with can start finding different ways to play top it. Like, what can you do? Maybe you want to flip over two cards and think about, whoa, what would we do there? So think about all that. I really enjoyed today, and let's definitely do this again sometime. Thanks. See you later.